Pocahontas and John Smith. They fell rapturously in love, despite cultural differences as wide as the Atlantic Ocean, and lived happily ever after in history books, bedtime tales, and a gorgeous Disney movie with a melodious soundtrack. Or maybe not. For starters, her name was not Pocahontas. It was Amanute or Madawaka, and she was not a young native Powhatan woman with a raccoon friend who dove off of mountain-like cliffs off the coast of Virginia. Because, well, for one, there are no cliffs off the coast of Virginia. Pocahontas is one of those stories that has been manipulated throughout history, time and time again. And today, no one knows Pocahontas's true tale of tragedy, heartbreak, and murder. So, where does Pocahontas or Madawaka story begin? In many historical accounts, though not always, Madawaka was born to her mother named Pocahontas and her father Mohun Senaka, who later became the chieftain of their tribe. Her name at birth, Madawaka, means flower between two streams, possibly because she was born between two rivers. Unfortunately, Madawaka's life begins with tragedy from the very beginning, when her mother passes away at the time of her birth. As was the custom at the time, the chief of the Powhatan chiefdom, Wahun Seneca, had other wives from other villages and hence many children. But Madawaka, a last memory of her mother, became a favorite to her father, and in his lingering grief of his late wife, Wahun Senaka often called his daughter the endearing name of Pocahontas. It was about the time when Pocahontas was 10 years old. John Smith and the English colonists arrived in Sinacamoca in the spring of 1607. At the time, John Smith was about 27 years old. Realistically, it wasn't probable for Pocahontas and John Smith to cross paths in the magical forest with talking trees. Rather, the children of the Powhatan were very closely watched and cared for by all the members of the tribe. Since Pocahontas was the daughter of a chief, she was likely held to even stricter standards and provided with more structure and cultural training. English colonists stayed near the Powhatan on the nearby Jamestown Island, but later began to explore outlying areas, and they were feared by many of the native people because they were known to enter villages put guns to the heads of their chiefs, demanding food and supplies and capturing their women and children. In the winter of 1607, the colonists and Smith met with Powhatan warriors and Smith was captured by the chief's younger brother. Because the English and the Powhatan fear the actions of the Spanish, they formed an alliance. Eventually, and according to oral history and contemporary written accounts by the Mataponi, Wahun Senaka grew to like Smith, eventually offering him the position of Werewants or leader of the colonists. Years later, Smith alleged that Pocahontas saved his life in the four-day process of becoming a Werewants. But something just doesn't fit the picture here, as there would be no reason to kill a man designated to receive an honor by the chief. Additionally, according to Mataponi sources, Children were not allowed to attend any sort of religious ritual similar to the Werewants ceremony. So, Pocahontas could not have thrown herself in front of John Smith to beg for his life. Now, as for defying her father and bringing Smith food, taking a look at the map, Jamestown was 12 miles from Sinakamoka and the likelihood that a 10-year-old daughter of the chief would travel alone are inconsistent with Powhatan culture. She, as well as other tribal members, did travel to Jamestown, but as a gesture of peace. Additionally, travel to Jamestown required crossing large bodies of water and, and to use 400-pound dugout canoes took a team of strong people to lift them into the water. So, a year or two goes by like this, without the formation of any kind of love story. Rather, in 1608 and 1609, John Smith's role as a werewants, chief of the colonists, takes an ugly turn. The colonists made inadequate attempts to plant crops to harvest, and Smith violently demanded supplies from surrounding villages after once again holding a gun to the heads of village leaders. 
Accounts from the Mattaponi histories tell of one tribal woman proclaiming to Smith, You call yourself a Christian, yet you leave us with no food for winter? Pocahontas's father, who had befriended Smith, once said to him, I have not treated any of my werewances as well as you, yet you are the worst werewance I have. Smith claimed Wahunsanaga wanted to take his life and asserted he knew of the plot because Pocahontas had come to warn him. Native historians rebuffed the historical claims of Smith as completely fabricated. A letter by Smith written in 1608 makes no claim of Pocahontas trying to save his life on two separate occasions. It wasn't until Smith published his book General History of Virginia in 1624 he claimed Pocahontas had twice saved his life. And by that time, the people who could have refuted Smith's claim were no longer alive. Moving on with the story, the early 1600s were a horrible time for tribes near Sinakamoka, as they were targeted by English colonists who had their eyes on women and even young children. Native women in the tribe would resort to offering themselves to men to keep their children safe. The Powhatan people were shocked by the behavior and horrified how the English government offered them no protection. In the midst of the horrible and atrocious acts committed by the colonists, Pocahontas was coming of age. During a ceremony, she was wed to the younger brother of the Potawomac chief, Japazau, and soon became pregnant. Pocahontas was about 15 or 16 at the time, when rumors of a possible kidnapping had become more of a threat, and she was living with her husband at his Pocahontas village. An English colonist by the name Captain Samuel Argyll sought to find her, thinking that if they captured the daughter of the chief, they could thwart attacks by the natives. Hearing of her whereabouts, Argyll came to the village and demanded Chief Japazau, brother of Pocahontas's husband, to give up Pocahontas or suffer violence against his village. Without much choice, Japazau agreed to a promise that Pocahontas would only be gone temporarily. But before Argyll left the village, he gave Chief Japazau a copper pot and claimed to have traded it for Pocahontas, breaking his promise. Before leaving the village, Pocahontas gave her baby to the women of the village and boarded the English ship. Unaware, when her husband would return, the colonists would take his life. The tribal chiefs of the Powhatan never retaliated for the kidnapping of Pocahontas, fearing they would be captured and that the beloved daughter of the chief would be harmed. Historians claim that while Pocahontas was held captive, she was taken advantage of by the colonists and soon became pregnant with her second child. She was then relocated to Henrico, where she had a son, Thomas, and this was all before her forced marriage to John Rolfe. In the midst of her captivity, before her marriage, the English colony of Jamestown was in a miserable condition. John Rolfe was under a 1616 deadline to become profitable or lose the support of England. Rolfe sought to learn tobacco curing techniques from the Powhatan, but curing tobacco was a sacred practice not to be shared with outsiders. Realizing the political strength of aligning himself with the tribe, he eventually decided to marry Pocahontas. Prior to her marriage to John Rolfe, the colonists pressed Pocahontas to become civilized and try to manipulate her against her family, saying they didn't care for her as they didn't come to rescue her. Pocahontas was forced to abide by the new English customs, wearing their clothes and eating their food, and eventually Pocahontas was forcibly converted to Christianity and took the name Rebecca. After the marriage, the Powhatan spiritual leaders and family to Pocahontas shared the curing practice with Rolfe. Soon afterwards, Rolfe's tobacco was a sensation in England, which saved the colony of Jamestown, as they finally found a profitable venture. But it was then that the Powhatan tribal lands became highly sought after for the tobacco trade, and hence the tribe suffered great torture, humiliation, and loss of life and land at the hands of the greedy English tobacco farmers. But Pocahontas's tragic story doesn't end here. Soon the Powhatan began hearing rumors of the colonists' desires to take Pocahontas to England. They obviously feared for her well-being and considered an attempt to rescue her. But Wahunsaneka feared his daughter might be harmed and hence restrained himself from going against the English. 
Rebecca Pocahontas Rolfe, traveled to England with John Rolfe, her son Thomas Rolfe, Captain Argyll, who had kidnapped her, and several Native tribal members, including her sister, Matakana. Though many settlers were committing atrocities against the Powhatan, many elites in England didn't approve of the mistreatment of the natives. The bringing of Pocahontas to England was to show friendship with the native nations, as it was a key to continued financial supports for the colonists. During her travels in England, Pocahontas did meet John Smith and expressed outrage due to the mistreatment of his position as leader of the colonists and the betrayal of the Powhatan people. After the journey and showing off of Pocahontas to the English elites, plans were made to return to Virginia in the spring of 1617. According to a recounting by Matakana, she was in good health while in England and on the ship preparing to go home. However, shortly after dinner with Rolf and Argyll, she vomited and died. The tribal members who were accompanying her, including her sister Matakana, said she was previously in good health and assessed she must have been poisoned due to her sudden death. According to Mad Pony History, many of the native people accompanying Pocahontas were sold as servants or carnival attractions. Pocahontas was just under 21 at the time of her death. Instead of being taken home and laid to rest with her father, Rolf and Argyll took her to Gravesend, England, where she was buried at St. George's Church on March 21st, 1617. And that was the story of Pocahontas Disney would never tell you. If you liked our video, don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel for more videos like this one.